Um, hi everyone, uh, my name is Zintle Kobeni Delange, all the way from the Western Cape. And I am the founder and director of the Great People of South Africa organization, which is a women's rights organization advocating for gender justice, for the equal and quality access to the criminal justice system, particularly for victims and survivors of gender-based violence. Um, we also touch um, on the sexual and reproductive health rights and we do quite a lot of work around court support program for victims and survivors of gender-based violence, you know, just to help them to navigate through the criminal justice system. Now, um, with the projects that we implemented with our funding that we received from WVL SA, we, which we're very grateful for, um, we got to obviously facilitate the court support programs, um, provide free basic or rather paralegal advice services to victims and survivors of gender-based violence. Um, we also refer them to uh, safe shelters, you know, for psychosocial support uh, services. And what we also did, um, which really caught a lot of uh, media's attention, was our informal um, uh, post-school paralegal training programs, which is a program designed to empower victims and survivors of gender-based violence with basic legal skills. So what we do is uh, we take them through this program for a period of three months, and after that we place them in uh, the GBV hotspots um, within the city of Cape Town, and there's been eight of them that have been identified. Um, so that is that is what we have been able to do. We've also, you know, been able to do a application for opportunities program for young women where we assist them to apply for educational opportunities if they may so wish, um, work opportunities, learnerships, internships. Um, because what we want to do as our core focus work is, you know, around the issue of gender-based violence, we want to ensure that we eliminate financial dependency of uh, these uh, women um, because what happens most of the time is that you know they struggle to leave abusive environments simply because you know they are financially dependent on the abuser so we're trying to eliminate that dependency so that is what we have been able to do with the work uh, or rather the funding that we received from WVL I think another important um, activity that we were able to implement was the section 11 dialogues so what we did is that or rather what we also believe on in as an organization is that you know our constitution is very beautiful and and um, I think it's praised across the globe. But we also feel that our constitution um, needs to be amended, such as uh, you know Section 11, which is the right to life. I know that we've got we're signed international treaties and all of that, but I think that our constitution should accommodate South Africans first before we, we expect to be praised, you know, by by by, by, by the entire world. So we, we we've been engaging with communities that are mostly affected by gender-based violence because look, our country is a you know we're in a pandemic. Um, our president said so. It's like that when you look at the stats, there's no they're not decreasing, they're increasing, which means that we need to intensify our efforts and how we respond to gender-based violence as well. So looking at section eleven which then says everyone's got a right to life. Um, do we really believe that? I wish, are, we, are, we, are we supposed to continue believing that, believing that? Because, I mean, if someone takes away someone's life, are we expected to, you know, um, respect that person's life? Um, I think if we look at the amendment of Section 11, um, because that's what a lot of communities that we've engaged with also, you know, they want. They want, you know, the reinstatement of capital punishment because we feel that we need to instill the fear back onto the perpetrators. Maybe that will change something because the current um, you know, remedies that we have in terms of our laws and all of that, really they're not um, deter, deterring um, you know, perpetrators from continuing to do all of this um, uh, violence. And so um, what has been the impact of the project in our community? Oh, it's, it's, there's been a huge impact. There has been a really, really huge impact. We have created this um, space, you know, for our beneficiaries where they, where they feel comfortable to share their stories of violence, the violence that they've experienced. I'll tell you a very simple story, a quick one. We had an 88-year-old uh, Ugogo coming into our programs. And she shared her story for the very, very, very first time. She was staying in the Eastern Cape and her children had to fetch her because the young man from next door had been repeatedly raping her. And while raping her, he was beating her. She's got an 
all kinds of wounds um, on her body, you know. Um, so we have created that space that any person of any age and gender can come and speak um, speak out um, about their stories, what, what they've experienced in terms of uh, violence. And so the impact that we have then had on the community was really uh, creating community cohesion, you know, because in this one particular community, the community of Down to Kailicha, where almost 80% of our uh, programs take place, um, the communities, they, the members, they didn't get along at first. Even in our programs, you could pick it up that when one person stands up to make a point, they're sort of like indirectly talking to the other. And because we've been there in that community for so long since we received our funding in, in, in 2020 from Genderlinks, we have created that spirit of togetherness. Now they know that the person that they didn't get along with back in 2020, if they have a problem at home with someone or they feel that someone is trying to break, they can call that person. So that is what our program has done just to create that community cohesion um, um, within the community. Um, yes, of course. Um, look, um, having the WVL funding literally opened doors to other fundings that came through. Uh, we were extremely blessed to receive this funding uh, because, you know, if, uh, if an organization such as Women's Voice gives you money, uh, the next organization also thinks if they got money from WVL, what's stopping us from giving them money? So definitely that what, that's what they've done. They've, they've opened up the space for us to be able to receive um, more uh, funding. The impact that this funding has had on our organization, oh, visibility. Um, oh yes, this is something I, I, I don't ever want to uh, forget mentioning. Our organization has had, I think, the most media coverage. Um, you know, and, and across all media platforms, our social media is buzzing. Um, and all platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, we're on TikTok, you know, uh, we're on YouTube. Of course, we're encouraged by, uh, you know, this, the same founder to, to do the same thing, you know, to venture into these other platforms. And we're doing extremely well. We've had a lot of media coverage, traditional media coverage. There's not a, a month that goes by and we are not um, on the papers or on doing a, a television interview. So that is, is one thing that this, um, you know, funding has contributed towards our organization the visibility and of course visibility means that other potential funders get to see your work um, you know it's, it's, it's been so it's been so inspiring and so incredible I actually get emotional just thinking about it um, before WVL our organization was we were working but not as effective as we started being when we received this funding so it has grown we've grown um, in terms of our organization structure I mean, we have a, a well-functioning board right now we have we have increased our staff members and and what's also nice about this is that remember I told you we have this informal paralegal training program so our staff members are made up of those uh, in, informal uh, paralegal trainers they are now our community-based paralegals and so they are able to also respond effectively and efficiently to GBD cases uh, within, uh, you know, their, their communities. Um, yes, um, it has definitely increased our networking and alliance, but phew, it has increased immensely. We have partnered up with organizations that we never thought we would work with, organizations such as Langa for Men. Uh, they look into, they work into in the space of gender-based violence, looking at how they can help, you know, uh, young men, uh, to, to, to know what GBV is and how or what role it is that they can play to ensure that gender, they, they, they don't actually become perpetrators and I we found that quite interesting. So we've been able to partner up with them you know, and do a lot of uh, programs um, with them. We've partnered up with mental health organizations such as Hope House where we've had the opportunity to refer GBV victims for psychosocial support to them because we believe very much in, in that you know as much as we we, we are wanting to do a lot of prevention, we also need to do a lot of response, you know. So that's what we've been able to do. I mean, we work with the Colors and Disability Group. They do fantastic work within the disability rights space. We have learned so much from them and our organization has become such an incredible and, and a better organization because, you know, we are better people because we've had an opportunity to work with all of these other um, grantees and that's just a few that I can mention. And of course, we've worked with other uh, WVL partners such as New Heritage, Guane, we did a whole GBV and mental health um, awareness uh, campaign with them. We have worked with INAM and NPO all the way in KZN, and right now we are planning, uh, you know, um, collaborating.
commemorative events with um, you know organizations such as Mutale Victim Empowerment Program, where they are based in Limpopo. Uh, we're working with Sisonke, uh, National Sex Workers um, uh, Movement, and that is something that we are extremely, extremely uh, uh, you know excited about. And of course, Epic Youth Matters all the way in KZN. So, so definitely, I mean, yo, we've we've definitely grown our partnership. Um, shoo, have we increased due to this grant? Yeah. Yes, definitely, yes, it has. Um, without a doubt. Let me see, what other improvements have we noticed uh, since we received this grant? Visibility. Let's go back to visibility. We've been very, very, very visible. And like I said, when as, as visible as we have been, it means that you know other funders have been able to you know look at our work and see our work uh, from a distance and become interested in also giving us more funding, which then allows us to you know do our work in the most effective and most efficient um, manner. So having this grant has just really been a blessing, guys. I don't know. I think that we we'll, must we'll get another grant. Yes, I think that Global Affairs can. Kind of <laughs> should definitely look into um, you know working together with gender links as well as women's voice and leadership South Africa once again and give us a huge chunk of money because we have this incredible amount of work that you know has come about because of the grant that we have had remember if we're more visible now because we have been very very visible it means that a lot of other potential beneficiaries have seen our work so they are literally trickling into the organization and saying I have this problem I have that problem please help us but because you know of limited resources we are unable to help everyone and that does not sit well with us so we definitely need more funding because you see now this funding like all the stuff that I've I've just told you now it needs to be you know um how can i put this we need more money let me just put it like we need more money we need more mandalas we need more dollars more canadian <laughs> uh, funds so that we can be able to 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 continue with the work that we have done